When prototyping a new game, one of the production milestones is getting your main character up and running in your game engine. However, the road there usually depends on some initial programming setup. In this series, we'll set up an animation state machine for our character Servo, and then create the gameplay logic to control him. Go to File, Project Manager. Create a new project using the empty template. Rename it Servo Basic Movement and store it in a local folder. Stingray restarts and compiles your new project along with the included assets. Open your project folder from the asset browser. Copy the content and script folders from the files provided with this movie into your local folder. When this is done, go to Edit, Level Testing, Refresh to recompile your project with the newly copied assets. Open the level Servo Basic Movement. Let's start by importing Servo. Navigate to the Content Models Servo folder, then click on the Import button. In the FBX import window, the default options ensure that Servo's textures will be imported into a new textures subfolder. Note that Stingray uses meters as working units and ZUP as its orientation axis. If your FBX file was exported using different settings, turning on the Create Extra Root option will maintain your file's settings on import. Turn on the Animation section to import Servo's joint hierarchy as a new skeleton. After import, Stingray compiles the mesh as a unit object along with its material, textures, and skeleton. Note that the unit itself is not your original FBX file, but a reference of it for faster access. You can also import assets by dragging them directly from the File Explorer. Drag the FBX files from the Animations folder into the corresponding one in the Asset Browser. This time, turn off the Unit Mesh and Materials section, turn on the Animation section, and then set Target Skeleton to the one you just created. Double-click an animation clip to open it in the Animation Clip Editor. This lets you quickly assess how your animations drive your character's joints. Now drag the servo unit in the center of the level. To assign servo the idle and run clips, we need to create an animation controller. Right-click either the servo unit or its skeleton and select Create Animation Controller. Rename it Servo Anim Controller. Double-click the new controller to open it in the Animation Controller Editor. Dock this window between the Level Viewport and Explorer. The Animation Controller Editor is where you'll set up a layer-based animation state machine to connect the imported clips together. Select the Animation Controller in the Tree View. In the Properties panel below, you can set which skeleton Stingray links the animation controller to, as well as the unit and level shown in the Asset Preview. An animation controller can contain multiple layers, each with its own state machine. This allows you to create additional animation variations such as aiming while running and jumping. For this tutorial, we don't need the base layer's default empty state clip, so delete it. Instead, drag the Servo Idle and Servo Run animation clips from the Asset Browser. Stingray creates the necessary clip states. Save your animation controller. Stingray assigns the idle state on Servo. You can change this by setting the base layer's default state property.
Notice that Servo's run cycle isn't looping in place. This is because its root joint is animated on the y-axis to set Servo's run stride. To extract this root motion, select Servo's skeleton unit in the Asset Browser. Then, in the Property Editor, set Root Motion Bone to Servo Reference. Save your changes. Now, Servo runs in place. Note that you can toggle this root motion in the Animation Controller's preview. In order to switch between the idle and run states at runtime, we need to trigger them using animation events. Rename the default anim end event to to run. Then create a new one and rename it to idle. Save your changes. The updated animation events are displayed as buttons under the animation preview. Now we need to link these events to transitions between the two states. Click and drag a transition arrow from the idle to the run state. Set the transitions on property to the to run event. Create an opposite transition from the run to the idle state. Link it to the to idle event. Save your changes and then validate them using the event buttons. With this basic animation state machine set up, we're ready to trigger these clip states at runtime. In the next movie, we'll create a flow graph to create some initial gameplay logic to control Servo's rotation.